Right now, we reach into the archives, uh, won a lot of games here, 44 to be exact, as a player at the University of Alabama. He was drafted in the first round, the fifth overall pick. He played 13 years in the National Football League as I welcome in EJ Jr. into the conversation. EJ, I hope you're doing well. Welcome into the game in T-Town. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's been a good day and everything is going well. Let me get an update. Uh, I know we try to talk at least once a year and uh, certainly uh, going to be talking about this College Football Hall of Fame nomination, but uh, give us an update on what you're doing uh, these days. Currently, I serve as a defensive line coach and the director of player development at Delaware State University, the HBCU is located in Dover, Delaware, and I've been here for about a, uh, just got through with our first season and we just got through with our recruiting trying to get ready for the fall campaign. Absolutely, and you know this is never an off time for the coaches. Uh, certainly, uh, preparing for the upcoming season. EJ, um, when you found out that your name was going to be on the College Football Hall of Fame ballot uh, and be voted on in the next couple of weeks to be inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame, uh, what were your thoughts? I, I was very, very uh, shocked because I learned from my SID. Uh, he came out by yesterday, and he was just you know uh, talking to some people and says. He said, well, Coach, I just want to ask you, what's your feeling about being nominated to the College Football Hall of Fame? I said, are you kidding? And he says, no, I'm serious. I'm like, wow. Uh, so I was very humble. Uh, it's a great, great honor to even be nominated. When I think about the guys in the class, I went back and looked up to see who was in the class, and I saw a lot of good friends, people who I know, like Andre Tippett, and I was seeing Marshall Falk, seeing Eric Dickerson. Uh, when you talk about guys of that quality and that caliber, it, it makes you really humble to see, that, hey, you're being considered with some of the great in the game, not only college but NFL-wise. So um, it's, it's, it's a long time coming. I was hoping that I might have a, uh, some consideration uh, after going into the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame, but I think I just wanted to represent the city of Nashville and my college at the University of Alabama and uh, just – so what I was able to do on the field, and, and God is continuing, continuing to have uh, to handle the rest. Absolutely, we're talking to EJ Junior right now inside the game. As you reflect on your playing days here at the University of Alabama, we're always talking about the '70s and the great decade it was. But from a player perspective, what was so special about those teams? I think the biggest thing is is that we had consistency in our coaching staff. Uh, a lot of young men who basically wanted to win and were dedicated to to playing to the best of their ability because we had a coach named Bear Bryant who wouldn't let us settle for less. You know, when you when you look at the Alabama teams now, uh, you know, under Nick Saban, it's very much the same mentality. Uh, you know, I'm watching Golden State and Cleveland go at it. When you look at that that type of, of, of caliber players who just want to go out day in and day out and try to play to the best of their ability and, and leave everything on the on the field or the court, it, it is it's something that it seems like it's easy to do. But when you see what you have to go through to get there, a lot of people are not willing to pay that price. And, and so we were blessed with a great group of guys, starting with my freshman year when you had Ozzie Newsom and Bob Pryder and Terry Jones and Jim Bunch, uh, Dwight Stevenson, and, uh, Don McNeil, Murray Lake, Jeff Rutledge, Jack O'Riff. We had a great group of guys who were leaders then, and it continued to pass down through each class, not wanting to let next, you know, want to be better than the class before, and not falling in the traps of being less than what you were the year before. So there was a lot of competition. I think competition, brick, brick, bread competition. I think knives sharpened knives, stone sharpened stone, uh, and it was passed down from generation to generation. So I was a proud part of that and I was great to be a part of it. We're talking to EJ Jr. right now inside the game here in Tuscaloosa and, and EJ I want to focus in on on you know practice I, I don't want this to sound silly but but maybe it is. When you practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday against some of the best talent in all of college football, was Saturday easier for you guys? I think we practiced I think we practiced more physical in the week. By the time we got to the game it was easy. And the one thing that, that we never did look at an opponent, there was no opponent who was easy. Uh, I remember playing Wichita State, and, we, you know, we beat them pretty good, but Coach Bryant took the second team and started them in that game. 
And the first team was so anxious to get on the field because we were we didn't want to get outdone by the second team. Uh, it, it was it was it was that mindset. I don't care how fit you are, Coach Bryant can still take his second and his third and still possibly beat your first. And he kept reminding us that each week that you know I can start start my second team to do better than what we're doing. And he and he did it a couple of times and and it would catch you off guard. But you didn't want to relinquish that role of being a starter, or or being one of considered one of the best by Coach Bryant. So you kept pushing yourself, and you had to prove it day in and day out. So by the time we would get to the game, I, met, I just saw Conrad Holloway at the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame about a couple of weeks ago, and I said he was one of the hardest persons to catch. He said, "Yeah, that's because I kept running away from you." Uh, <laughs> so uh, when you face guys who are all that caliber. And, and he's part of the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame as well as the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame, uh, of what I'm a part of. Uh, you, you know you played against some great players. When you look at winning back-to-back national championships in 1978 and 1979, which was harder? Was the second championship harder than, than the first? Um, you would say that. I actually go all the way back to our freshman year uh, because – we were 11 on one that year, and that was the year that they jumped Notre Dame from fifth to first when they beat Texas. We beat a good Ohio State team, and Oklahoma was the number two team in the country. We were number three, and we won convincingly. So if number one lost and number two lost, you would think, think that number one, I mean, the number three team would be the number one team. Well, Notre Dame was fifth, and they beat Earl Campbell and them pretty well in the Cotton Bowl, and jumped them from fifth to first. So... We wanted to be better than that team. And, of course, we had the, the great 78 team who had the goal line stand. And then the, the 79 team was 12-0. Was and 0. It was still that mentality. We wanted to be better than the year before. Each year was a different year. It was a different class. Even though you got some of the same guys, it's still a different mentality. You're adding freshmen. You're losing seniors. So you have a different type of leadership. You have a different type of chemistry. And that's what Coach Saban constantly talks about when he talks about, okay, yes, that team was last year's team. This is a whole different crop that we got guys coming in because you lose the thing as you're, in, uh, you're including freshmen and you had some changes during the year. You still have to push yourself, and it's a leadership within the leadership. In other words, the upperclassmen who carry, carry that banner uh, – to push yourself to be better. And then going into my, it was a little tougher, but then going into my senior year, we pushed ourselves uh, as well as we could, and we lost two games. We lost to Notre Dame by 7 to nothing, and we lost to Mississippi State 6 to 3, which I still have some disputes about that game, but I digress. Uh, and we felt that we had the worst class of all because we lost two games uh, in a season. So, it's, it's always hard because it's always easier to be the chaser than the chasee. Uh, but you, when you get there, you know what it takes to get there. And to stay up there, you know what it takes to continue to push yourself. But you're, when you're being chased, it's a lot harder because you're looking forward. You can't look backwards. Whereas when you're the chaser, you can always look forward because the person that you're trying to catch is in front of you. You ever look back, and, and, and I, this is something that, you know, we look back at the great Derek Thomas, certainly a great linebacker, a great sack guy. Uh, he played in an era where running the football was quite heavy. It, it's not like it is currently in college football. Uh, your numbers, uh, you had a lot of great sacks, a, a lot of tackles for a loss. You ever think if you were able to play in this generation with a pass, uh, happy teams of, of college football, where your stats would be, not just yourself, but other players uh, very similar to, to your skill set? <coughs> I think so. I think a little bit. There's also some differences when you you always have to. I, I always throw in Cornelius Bennett in that group. Uh, no you doubt. know, Mike Pitt. Uh, we were when we played for Coach Brown. We were anchored. We played on one side or the other. Whereas uh, Cornelius and DT got a chance to move around a little bit. But teams begin to start throwing the ball a lot more. Uh, you know, when we played, I think the one team that we put the two teams that we played that threw the ball quite a bit was Mississippi State and, and uh, Ole Miss. Because uh, I remember they had, uh, Ole Miss had 359 yards passing on us, and we thought that was the worst. Thing. But they threw the ball over 50-something times. And that was like, man, this is a long day when you have to constantly try to chase down a quarterback and try to get to him. But 
you know, I would, you know, the sack totals make a difference for when you're a defensive lineman because that's what the standard is now. And I think it really, really became noticed when I went into the pros and you had guys like Lawrence Taylor and then you had Reggie White. Uh, those guys getting 15 to 20 sacks. The, 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 the game changed by sacks now. It wasn't tackle for losses. It was a sack. So, um, I think, I think we could have done just as well. Uh, but now with the concepts of teams throwing the ball a lot more than they do the hurry up offense to try to neutralize defenses, uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit tougher, but then the standards going to always be higher. Yeah, let me ask you from your perspective as a coach perspective with this up tempo offense and uh, ineligible linemen downfield. I know that's not directly affected a lot with the defensive line, uh, but your thoughts about some of the offensive uh, that you have to go up against? I, I really, I, I, you know, I, I don't like to hurry up offense uh, because I, I'm an old school guy. I like to hit you in the mouth and control the clock and control the chain. Uh, but offense, you know, sells too. But you always will always go back and look. Defense wins championships, and your defense has to make adjustments. So just like everybody else, will make will make changes. Uh, I'm not. I, I'm glad that they're going to start uh, changing this rule with the offensive lineman going down the field because it just, it, it really does disrupt what you're trying to do as a defense. Uh, when your linebackers are taught, hey, you see those guys come downfield, it's it's run. And, and they're, they're making more of a, they're allowing them to come downfield and it's a pass and I, I think that's a disadvantage and it's not really uh, fair to the defenses and people may call me a whiner but when you step on that field and you got a 300 pound to come in at you now then you realize it's a pass uh, and they're doing that to, to bring you in so they can put more stacks on their on their uh, offensive side of the ball uh, doesn't make me a happy camper so I'm a defensive minded coach I always will be. Uh, but they've also petty kicked the game where you can't touch the quarterback high, you can't touch him low, you can't grab wide receivers. Well, they do still grab a lot of grabbing and pushing. So um, the game has changed. Hopefully we can make it safer. Uh, there are going to always be things that you like and there are going to be things you dislike. The best thing is Coach Brown would say, adjust, adapt, and conquer. Final couple of questions here is we're visiting with a great linebacker at the University of Alabama, EJ Jr., right now inside the game. He was on the College Football Hall of Fame ballot that was released yesterday by the National Football Foundation and will be voted on in the next couple of weeks to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Uh, as you look back, just a couple of days ago, a new uh, group of players arrived here on the campus of the University of Alabama. If you could talk with them and tell them what it's like to wear that crimson jersey to represent a tradition that stretches back from uh, here back to 1892, nobody has more championships, nobody has more bowl wins, nobody has more SEC titles. Uh, there's a few teams out there that have a few more All-Americans uh, than Alabama, but certainly our tradition is rich and, and, and very. Uh, we try to preserve that here. What would you tell an incoming player uh, about the University of Alabama? I would always say embrace the history. Embrace those. It's just like you talk to, to young men, you know, or young women. Remember whose shoulders you're standing on, what it took for those people to get you to where you are. Where Alabama is, when I remember the, the fields, the stadium, Brian Denny Stadium was only 59,000 feet. They didn't have the football complex. They didn't have the, the, the indoor bubble. They didn't have the new softball and baseball fields, all that was built because of tradition, of people who put their blood, sweat, and tears, um, a man with a vision, you know, from Coach Bryant to Mal Moore to, to Nick Saban and to Bill Curry, who's the athletic director now, of uh, wanting to do better, to be better, uh, uh, and it's just a representation of greatness. But there are a lot of shoulders that, that we stood on, and I, and I too, Stand on the shoulders of guys who were before me. When I look at guys who are not in the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame that should be there, like Sylvester Crumb, you know, I, I, I stand on his shoulders because he was the one who taught me how to be a defensive end. Uh, you know, I look at, at the guys like uh, uh, John Mitchell, uh, you know, and then you think about the go older guys who I'm good friends with, like, like Leroy Jordan. I learned a lot from Leroy Jordan. I learned a lot from Woodrow Lowe. I learned a lot. From talking to to guys who were before me, and the history just continues to grow and grow and grow. And I'm like, 
when you see where you come from and then where you're going, and then you look back and say, man, did I make a difference? And that's what you want to Did I make a difference? Did, the things that I learned at the University of Alabama helped me become better. And what is your mark? What, what did you do? What, did, what is your legacy when you left the university? We want to be better and leave the university better than when we came in. And when I look back at it, I think we did a decent job. Would I like to have had three or four national championships? Yes. Yeah. But I also have to remember there were a lot of great guys who helped me look good. But when I got those honors, I didn't receive them on behalf of myself. I received them on behalf of those guys who I was in the trenches with, who we practiced against, who made me look good on Saturday. And that's who you are. I represented Nashville, Tennessee, and Maplewood High School. I'm parents, that community. When I got to the University of Alabama, I represented the, the University of Alabama, the state of Alabama, the city of Tuscaloosa, and all those fans who came out and cheered for us day in, day out. Wow. EJ, that is an awesome answer. Uh, this is uh, – it, it's always fun to be able to catch up and talk some Alabama football. And matter of fact, I'm looking on Twitter, and we've got some of you uh, – uh, some of your former teammates, and, and not only former teammates, uh, uh, but people that have wore the crimson jersey that are responding to, to your thoughts. Uh, Bill Searcy, one of those guys that uh, is listening and, and, and actually probably went up against you multiple times as an offensive lineman here, uh, uh, and he's talking about going up against you on Twitter. So, uh, uh, EJ. Those guys, they, that, I, I tell you, when you practice against Jim Bunch, Bob Pryor, Bill Searcy, Fred Sadler, all I mean, those Dwight Stevenson, believe me, the only reason why we were good because those guys were great. And and if you could beat our offensive line, you were doing something. So when I played against Penn State or when I played against Ohio State or we played against Southern Cal or, or LSU, I'm like, guys, you all may be good, but we face the best every day we practice. And but we had cut drills and things like that. Uh, it, it was fun. Sometimes you, you want to hate them on the field. And when we walked off the field, it was easy to go hang out with each other, laugh, and we all shared in winning. And, and we made each other better. And I really, really thank those guys, and I really miss those guys. No doubt. It's a unique fraternity uh, to, to listen to guys like yourself talk about the University of Alabama history. Thank you so much for spending a couple of minutes with us, and also congratulations on the nomination uh, certainly you got to get a lot of votes, and uh, hopefully we can get you in the College Football Hall of Fame, and we'll certainly do our part of advocating for your uh, playing ability, your stats and credentials speak for itself. Thank you again for being a part of our show. Uh, hopefully we'll have another conversation on down the road. Roll Tide to you. Thank you. You all be blessed, and thank you for allowing me to represent the University of Alabama.